guys, we're back with Behind the Bikini, and we are on episode 48. I checked ahead of time this time. <laughs> so before we get started with today's podcast, like, comment, subscribe, hit all the buttons wherever they are on your device is. And today, our topic, we are going to cover the pluses and minuses of being either with just an individual coach or being on a coaching team. And I would like to cover that kind of from the vantage point of an athlete, but also vantage point of a coach. Um, I know we've both had experience with both, so um, we can kind of give you our two cents and what we like and what we don't like and, you know, the pluses and minuses, because there's not one size fits all, I think, for everybody. So... It's actually a question I see it posted a lot, that kind of thing. What's the advantage of being on a team, all that kind of stuff. So I thought it would be a good idea to, to, um, to kind of talk about that. So, but until we go into that, we're doing this ahead of time because you are off to USA's tomorrow. I am. Yep. I leave first thing tomorrow morning. I'm excited. These, these freaking show weekends are starting on Thursday every single week. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Yeah. If it's, yeah. Um, Pretty much every weekend if we're traveling it's either like a wednesday or a thursday that way we can make sure that we get there and especially for the national shows because the check-ins are always yeah. like so early so yeah yeah, yeah. well you know it's, it's a plus and minus because you, these national shows most of them used to be like one day shows but now they're putting them into two three four day shows because they're putting the different divisions in each day right because the, these shows used to go forever and now they they're they still go forever but <laughs> Just within were. that twelve-hour period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I actually I was really happy about Masters Nationals because I got a chance to take a nap. So I was like, oh god, I feel so much better because I was like, when I went back and I looked at it, I was like, okay, I I went to bed. I fell asleep probably around 10, 30, 11 o'clock or so, which for me is um is early. It's early for me. I'm a, I'm a late night person. But then I was up at two forty-five, you know, and just boom, start going right. And I was fine all the way through until like towards the last half of prejudging, I started like going like this. So I was like, I was dying. Because what happens is that when you're go, 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 you don't think about it. So you're not tired. It's not until you actually sit down. And I started sitting down once we got to like the end of bikini into wellness that day. And I was like, okay, I'm actually really tired right now. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I came at, I was backstage mostly all of pre-judging and then I came around once all the bikini girls were off stage and I yeah, remember yeah. sitting down and I looked at you guys. I was like, this is the first time I've sat down since 6 yeah. this morning and it was like one o'clock at that point. So yeah. it's true. You know, sometimes, I mean, with anything in life, I feel like sometimes you just have to keep pushing when you're that tired because the second you sit down, it's like, fuck. so we Absolutely. did have a couple hours in between. I mean, you were up at three for, you know, doing makeup. I got yep. up at five that morning, but I had two hours and I ate. <laughs> and then yeah. before you know it, they're coming back in the room and checking in with us before finals. But, you know, that's to be expected. That's our job. You know, we know that on coaches that, you know, Saturday is we're still working. I think yep. people forget to realize that too. I was, you know, we're getting ready to sign up a new client of mine that was coming back to me and she's, you know, very excited. And she was like, yeah. well, why can't you get me my plan, um, you know, by Monday? And I'm like, I need like, one day off a week like yeah. i just need one day and most Absolutely. sundays i'm working at least a couple of hours but like not a full plan you know so i think people tend to forget that we work pretty much seven days a week you know but sometimes Absolutely. we just gotta lay that boundary down and that's why like taking a few hours on sunday is super important for us to recharge yeah same you know the same thing with me like i you know i i I've, I've talked about this before. I'm a hyper responder and I've tried to get better about that because it's, it doesn't do anything good for me and it doesn't do anything good for other people because it teaches people that I'm a hyper responder, you know? And it, so I've, I've, I've had to tell myself, okay, sit back and relax for a second. Like 24 hours is plenty of time. You know, some people like with our customer care tickets, it's 48 hours and it's usually within, it's less than that. But if we have to wait 24 hours, it's going to be okay. If it's an emergency, that's one thing. If it's an emergency, that's one thing. It's like, it's quick. If it's an emergency, See, but if it's just regular questions, regular thoughts and things like that, you're going to be okay till tomorrow. It's right. going to be okay. Right. Yeah. So um, I, it, it's, it's difficult though. Cause I definitely like, and it, I feel the obligation to respond to, you know? So it's like, I feel like I'm letting people down and stuff when I don't. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta remember, I gotta take care of myself as well. You know, like that's, that's a big part of it. I got, I gotta take care of myself. Like yesterday I was stressed all day long. Cause I typically do my live feeds on Tuesday nights to wrap up the weekend shows. And I was so behind on everything all day yesterday. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push it off. I have to, I'm like, I, it, I probably can make it work, 
but I need to like breathe for a second. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, I, I don't want to do this. Like I'm, I'm that person. I'm like, I don't want to do something half-assed. And I knew if I went into the live feed last night, it was going to be half-assed because I wasn't going to get a chance to pull up pictures and review and all that kind of stuff. And, and I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I want to give myself the opportunity to, to do it right when I do things, you know, and that's the same thing going back to plans. Like, cause inevitably when somebody signs up, they're super excited to get started. And I'm like, yes, I understand, but I need things from you first before I can build a plan for you. I'm not going to just like spit something out to you. I get that a lot. I don't know about you, but when they first sign on, they're like, where's my plan? I'm like, well, you have to give me this, 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 and this before I can build you something. I'm like, I'm not going to just throw a plan at you and say, go have at it. I need to know where you are right now before I can put something together for you. You know, like that's part of it. You got to tell me what you, what you need. So give me a few days. I'm like, let me review everything, you know, get me everything I ask you for. As long as you give me everything that I ask you for, I can review everything and put it all together, you know? So it, I, I tell, tell people up front to take me a few days to get your program together. And usually they're okay with that. But it's just like, like you said, it's like immediately like, well, why can't you get it to me now? I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. So just agree. It's okay. usually a good sign too, if the coach is yeah. taking a few days to make your plan that it's actually custom to you, right? Right. That would be concerning if somebody, you know, a coach gives you a plan and they haven't even asked you one question yet. You haven't filled out any documentation. Right. You should probably be a little bit concerned, right? So, you know, for all of us at Body Fusion, I think we, we, all of us, you know, we make custom plans to each person. 100%. So that takes us a couple of days to really read through those things and look at the photos and come up with a training block for you. And, you know, I hear sometimes that people sign up and then within an hour, they're getting a you know, plan from a coach and mm -hmm. they haven't even asked them any questions about what they're currently doing. You right. know, that, that would be more concerning than That's right. a coach taking a couple days. You know, and I even do that coming out of a show. Like I did that with Ada this weekend, you know, she just did masters and what we're going to do going forward is we're going to build size, you know, going into next year. But like, I, I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to do for her, but it wasn't until we sat down and got on a phone call on Monday and like, okay, this is how we're going to structure everything because this is what's going to work for you. We always have to think about their lifestyle and things like that too, you know? So like, I, I want to do things that she's going to enjoy doing. You know, I want to do things that I know are going to get us close to our goals. And we need to discuss all those things before I just spit something out at you. You know, right. and I told I told her, I said, you know, I, I, the way I structure it, and it depends on the person. She's very, she's been a personal trainer her whole life. So like, she's very structured. I don't have to worry about her, that kind of thing. I was like, you know, just have fun this week, train whatever you want this week. I said, I'll have your program to you by Wednesday. She's like, oh no, take your time. She's like, she's like, I, I, she's like I'm good. You know, I'm going to stick to it. I said, yeah, I know you're going to stick to it. I was like, but I'll still have everything ready for, ready for you by Wednesday. <laughs> You know, so, Absolutely. <laughs> but that's communication with your, with your clients, with your coaches and things like that too. So, um, but yeah, I think overall the weekend was, was actually really, really good. So I think you felt like it was successful too for you, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And I know we were talking about this yesterday on our fit body back office call, but mm -hmm. you know, once again, this year, the masters nationals is some of the most competitive physiques I've seen so far this year. I take okay. it one step further to say that, you know, even some of the open classes that I've been seeing, you know, yeah. at the national level. So you know, once again, I know we talk about this all the time. Age is just a number. Literally, it's just a number. I mean, these women look absolutely fantastic and mm -hmm. setting the bar very, 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 very high. Um, you know, and I think that some people, you know, t tend to underestimate the master's divisions, especially mm -hmm. as a master's athlete themselves about what truly these women are capable of and what amount of muscle that they're bringing. Yep. Um, you know, mature muscle is a thing and it is shown you know so mm -hmm. i don't know i was i was super happy super yeah. impressed super yeah. super impressed um you know it lights a fire for me as a coach i have a lot of masters competitors right now and you know really seeing what they're looking for and you know these women need sides you know yeah. so it's mm -hmm. cool it's it, it was it was it was a really great weekend it was awesome to have you there and yeah. the rest of our coaches we worked super well together um, everybody was super hands-on. All the athletes were super happy. So that's all, that's all I could ask for. That, that's a successful weekend to me. Yeah. I mean, this kind of goes into the topic that we're going to talk about in a minute, but like, that was something too, because again, I was doing hair and makeup all morning long and I was rushing to get back downstairs for prejudging. And the first thing, when I stepped backstage, you're like, I had A to eat. I was like, awesome. <laughs> I was like, 
fantastic because she, you know, she was in 15 over. So she was going on relatively quickly. So I was trying to get down there as fast as I could. I got down there like right at eight o'clock, you know what I mean? So they were putting the 60 year olds right on stage at that point. So, you know, that kind of goes into the concept of why it's good to have a team of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was very helpful to know that I didn't have, I mean, and for me too, that was almost, that was kind of like the first time that that kind of happened too. So it was nice to know that I could rely on you guys to, to, to take over when I couldn't, when I couldn't be there, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it's nice to know you can rely on people. <laughs> you know, I said that in my post, I was like, for the, the entire time that I've had my business, it's been me by myself, you know, and I just have to do it or it doesn't get done, you know? So it's nice to have other people there that can actually help in those situations. And that you trust, right? Correct. You know, like right. It's, it's one thing that's that. And that is a reason why, like, I feel the same, like before Fit Body, like it was just me and Drew, like we did yep. everything because number one, we just didn't have the resources or the people in our right. life to help. Right. But number two, like if somebody did offer to help, did we necessarily trust them? And I know that that's, you know, that's, shady or whatever but it's like you know no, it's it's, true it's, right like i'm dealing with an athlete who relies on me to make a tough call and that i don't necessarily know you or the call that you're going to make but because we interact so frequently on fit body fusion we do all these calls together obviously you and i are super close to so like we have this trust and understanding that if i thought your athlete needed to eat and i told you and you weren't there you'd be like okay cool just like yeah right just ahead do it, do it. Yep. you know like and and i trust you to do the same so yep. It, that is so valuable for us because that just gives us peace of mind and less stress on our hearts as well. Right. Well, and, and another aspect of that too, when we're talking about going into finals and getting Janet to walk on her uh, on her toes for the walk to the back curtain, so yes. we had a feeling we had a feeling going to, into finals. You know, she was she was in the top two, so we knew. Drew's client, we knew that if she was going to win her pro card, she was going to have to go for an overall, which meant she was going to have to do the walk to the back, you know, and, and I, and Drew was trying to get her to walk to the back and keep her glutes up. And then she's, he's just like, Sean, you have something that I can help. I was like, yeah, get her up on her toes. So we all just kind of, we all just kind of walk, like push together to get her into the best situation possible, which is nice. Sometimes, and that's what I say about this kind of stuff too. Sometimes there's always like that, the principal thing that we're all trying to get mm -hmm. somebody to do, but sometimes one person can say it a little differently or show it a little differently or just communicate it so that it clicks. Correct. And again, when you have a group of people that all see things the same way and all are trying to get to the same fundamental goal, sometimes we have to take a different path to get there, but we get there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's, and that's important, you know, and again, it, like you said, you have to trust the person and know that they're going to be doing what you want them to do. Uh, I think that's, that's, that's one of the good things that, again, when we're talking about our topic today about the team aspect, it's like, we all have a, that main goal in mind. We just have different ways of getting there. So it helps us all to get there in a different way. Right. You know? Which is great because people right. are different. And just like you're saying, they communicate different ways. Yeah. People have different personalities. They interpret things a different way. So having so many ways of saying things and approaching things and doing things is so valuable, you mm -hmm. know, because as one person, you can't do everything. So that's, right. that's where, you know, coming together, you know, it really is like our, our secret weapon is we yeah. all utilize each other and our strengths and our weaknesses. And, you know, if we have a weakness, I rely on you, you know, to help with closing right. or you rely on me to help with it, you know? So it's, yep. it's really is like such a cool thing. Yeah, absolutely. And like going back to, so going back to like prep stuff, things like that too. I mean, you know, having Drew doing the training and everything for all of us now has made a big difference. You know, we see a lot of the pros coming out now and just killing it because their training has been so different, you know, and to be honest, like I use a lot of the same principles when I'm going into programming some of my new clients. I'm like, listen, I'm like, just so you know, this is going to look very different <laughs> from what you're used to. This is not normal, normal programming. I mean, this is not what you're normally going to see but it works. I was like, and this is why it works. Look at the people it's working for. You know what I mean? So just, you got to, I know I understand you got to trust a little bit because it's different, but it's, it's working, you know? Yeah. And uh, so that's where the, the, you know, three heads are better than one kind of thing, you know? So um, on that note, how's your prep going? Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm continuously dropping. Um, we're kind, we kind of like pulled back a little bit just because I was dropping a little too fast and mm -hmm. we still have a, lot, a good amount of time to go. But um, I checked in yes, yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday and no changes for the week again. This is like yeah. four in a row, no changes. So everything's really, really, really good. Um, uh, surprisingly, like with travel, it, it's almost helping me, you know, the busier I am. So mm -hmm. I know people are like, I don't know how you do it all the time with travel. I just, I, I do it, you know, yeah. you just you just execute. Um, so yeah, everything's really great. I posed with Jamie yesterday. Um, 
there was no um, corrections that are needed. I'm literally posing every day at this point for at least 15 minutes, mm -hmm. work, working on my walk to the back, you know, all mm -hmm. the things, so the comparison rounds, holding, et cetera. Um, we're going to add in a little bit of like some pelvic floor stuff just to really work on like my lower abdominals. Um, but other than that, we're, we're cruising right now. So super happy. I, I feel really, really, really good. This is the first prep I'd never, like, I haven't really gotten to like a place of like truly suffering, like yeah. hunger, low energy. Of course I have like days, but this is the best I've ever felt. This is the fullest I've ever been at this weight being this lean. Um, so yeah, we'll yeah. see what happens. Well, that's yeah. what I, I was going to make. I was going to make that point because you're traveling every weekend and like across the country traveling every weekend. So you're a really good testimony of you can do this regardless. Like there's no, there's no excuses for it. As long as you're prepared for it, you can do it. You know, if it means and, something to you. You figure it right, out. You make right. Right. Yeah. Right. And if you can do this at the highest Olympia level, you know, that should tell people even, you know, just all the way down to lifestyle, like you can do this. This is a lifestyle. You know, you start to get into habits and into into routines, things like that. Even when you're traveling, there's habits and routines to be taking into account. It's not going to be perfect the first time you do it, but it's going to get better as you go. You know, I've, I have a client now that she's going into her first prep and she travels a lot for work. And the first few times in her off-season programming, she was off on all of her traveling. But because she was off, she's like, I know what now to fix the next time I go. And so she fixed it the next time. It wasn't a, it wasn't a big of an issue. And then she found a lot of other little things. She's like, oh, well, I can actually do better with this. So I'm going to do better next time. And that's how you get better as you as you go through this stuff. And again, one of the reasons why you should go right into an off season with a coach at first versus a prep, because you can get all those little things out of the way and figure them out so that when you actually get into a prep program, you've already got all those things figured trip. out. <laughs> yeah. You've already got all those things measured and you know exactly how to handle them when they come up, when you're actually in a prep. So again, when we're going to, to off season, it's improvement season. That's where you're improving all of those things and you're, you're getting better at those things. I know for myself, even, I mean, like the first, the first year that I was with Jamie, the majority of it was off season. Right. So I would go on these, these trips and like, that was when I was first doing macros, things like that. So I was doing okay, you know. You were learning. Where, yeah, but I was like, I was like, oh, let me just go grab this or let me go grab grab that or whatever. And it still worked, but it wasn't the best, it wasn't the best solution, but it still worked. You know, and then you get better. You're like, okay, well, I know I gotta bring this with me, and I know I gotta bring that with me, and and those kinds of things. And like we were talking about the, the last one about the travel hacks. I just have a bag that's packed with all of my like my non-perishable foods and coffee and all those kinds of things. It just goes with me everywhere I go. Yeah. And then the rest of the stuff is what you know is when I change out, whether it's the clothes or whatever it is. Yeah. So you just get better as you move along. So um, and if you if you travel a lot, you have two of everything, two food right? skills, two this, two that, and just like you're saying, like I have a dry bag of like my extra utensils, my bowl, blah, blah, blah. And it all just mm -hmm. stays in my bag. And you know, mm -hmm. that way you're not unpacking, packing, unpacking, packing. And that kind of mm -hmm. takes that stress off of you too. You're just always prepared whether you're home or on the road. Yep, absolutely. You know, and, and, and this is a funny uh, story from this past week too, because again, Ada, I had her doing her, we talked about the scale, right? So she got to Pittsburgh and I asked her what her weight was. She goes, I don't, they don't have a scale here. I said, why didn't you, why didn't you bring one? I said, we went through this in, in universe. I'm like, I want your weight every morning. So I know where you are, you know? And I was like, listen, I was like, this is what you're going to do. I said, you're going to go to a drugstore or you're going to Instacart a scale to your, <laughs> to your room right now. I said, and then you're going to keep that with you everywhere you go. I yeah. said, and I said, when you go home, what I want you to do is I want you to step on your home scale and this scale and tell me how far off they are. <laughs> because then I know, again, this is data points. It's not that I care what your weight is, but it's data points. And I want to know you know, where you are and what's, what's happening when I feed you something, do you drop later? Do you gain? Like, I want to know, you know, and, and in reality, I actually fed her more going into the show and she dropped more. She ended up coming in two pounds tighter than when she did the last show. And I wouldn't have known that if she didn't go buy a scale, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, now I know I'm like, I fed you more. You dropped. I was like, that's, that's good. I said, we can fill you out more. I can give you more. And I ended up feeding her more going into the show and she looked better. She looked fuller. She looked rounder. You know, those are all data points. And right. that's why we do those kinds of things. And again, we, I was like, <laughs> to listen, Instacart and get a, get a scale or something and get, put it in your bag. <laughs> I, I send my girls two checklists, like their packing checklists and the one that they need to have backstage. And I reiterate on there, yes, you need your body weight scale. Yeah. Like, you know, and that's the thing, like in peak week, like whatever you do on, you know, Saturday going into peak week, you're going to do up until show day. So right. if you step on the scale every day, 
you need your scale every day. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, and again, and again, it goes back to is like our goal was to come into masters a couple pounds tighter. I'm like, you need to know what your weight is to know if you're a couple pounds tighter. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you right. know, so and but, that and data it, point for next time around, right? right? The beauty in getting exactly right. better with an athlete is continuously working with the athlete with through preps, through improvement season. So now next time that you guys come out, you know that her best weight for stage was X. But if you don't yeah. have that, then you don't kind of really know what you're prepping for next time. You know, the number one question from a first time competitor is always like, what do you think my stage weight's going to be? And the mm -hmm. answer truly is, I don't really know, but I suspect it's going to be between but, but, but. But yeah. now if you continue to work with that athlete after their first show, when you go into the next prep, you're like, all right, your last stage weight was 120 pounds. I think we needed to be a little bit tighter. So we're going to try to get to 120 or 118. Then we're going to, yeah. and you have all of those data points. So that's why it's so imperative it's not that we want the number it's that we're trying to figure out are you full are you are you losing weight you know where are you at for now to help fill you out and for right. next time that you step on stage that's right absolutely and we and we see how your body responds to different stimuli too you know like i said i mean i was able to feed her more and because she was before because she ate more she got fuller and she actually dropped more weight so i was like okay i can feed you even more you know what i mean we can keep going as opposed to okay if i feed you more then your stomach's going to blow out you know right. what i mean things like that so you see how how the body responds you know that, again just another just another way to measure stimuli and of course as we always talk about it's never gonna be the same twice it's never gonna be the same but at least gives us something gives us a base point gives us something right. to work with you know so that so that was good it was good i was like i was like okay now this is your scale for any time you, you go to a show anytime you go anywhere bring this with you <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I have my travel scale. And if anybody needs the recommendation, you can feel free to message me on, on Instagram. Um, and I use that all the time now with how much I travel. Like I used to have a big scale, but I can't pack that one. And then just like you said, mine was like 0.2 to 0.5 pounds off. So now I just, I step on my travel scale, no matter what, it's like this big, it's great. It's very accurate. It has an app. Um, and I use that one all the time. That way it's just, it's very accurate. And I travel with that. I take it everywhere with me. I still weigh in every day and it's very easy. It's very easy to pack. You just, again, just, you know, it takes a little bit of money. I mean, this is what, less than $30 on Amazon and it's something you can use every day, you know? Yeah. So it's just, it's just finding, you know, what works, what doesn't, how to get more space in your bag. I get all of those things, but mm -hmm. there's a will, there's a way. There's a way. If you want to make <laughs> yeah. it happen, you'll make it happen. That's right. Exactly. You know, same thing, like, cause I, going into universe, you know, I have my issues with going to the bathroom and all that kind of fun stuff. So, um, universe, I have no problem with any of that. Masters, I did. So I was like, oh, freaking awesome. So, but again, I go back to, I have the data points from before. I know what worked before. I know how to fix this. And I know what's going on based on my weight too, because like my weight started dropping, even though I wasn't going to the bathroom. So it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, you, you understand, okay, my body's still progressing, even though I don't actually see the number on the scale, because I know that if my body wasn't progressing, my weight would be increasing. Right. So it, again, it just helps you to manage where you are. Right. So, and I think I figured out part of this too. So I started Googling. Because <laughs> I was like, this is not a digestive thing. I don't feel off with my digestion and stuff like that. It's, it's, I think it's more a rest thing or whatever. There's also studies out there that you can get constipated right after you ovulate. Because what I was noticing was I was seeing this pattern right after my ovulation every month where I have issues with it. And I'm like, what oh, is yeah. going on? So I started Googling and it's like, there's studies out there that, that specifically say that can cause you to be constipated after your ovulation. Just Even the other way too. It could be yeah. constipation mm -hmm. and I've seen diarrhea yeah. around, around ovulation and around a cycle too. Yeah. So yes, I see that a lot with my athletes actually. Mm -hmm. Yep. So those are all things to keep in mind. And again, it just starts to settle your brain when you've got these data points. And you're like, okay, well now I understand because nothing I'm doing wrong with my diet. It's just my body going through its hormonal pattern. And that's what it's going to do. So, but that's also a testament to how in tune with your body you are, right? Correct. So now you're seeing this come up every month around a specific time. And you're like, well, what's the time? Okay. I'm obvious. That's like the true definition of being in tune with your body. And sometimes Absolutely. it takes a few months to see that, that progression or, you know, that, that same thing that's happening and then be able to put that together. So now you know what to expect around the same time every month. That's right. Because even Dan said, he's like, I see this happen every time you come home from a show. I said, no, because it didn't happen at universe. <laughs> I was like, right. I had no problem at universe. I said, I've been, I said, I've been keeping track. I said, I, I watch on my little fertility front calendar. I was like, I know when it's happening. I was like, so that this is what's in, in 
you know, the, the, the steady, this is where, why, you know, and good thing so, you found that out because there's really not much you can do during that time. You just know what to expect and stay on top of your fiber and water and go for the best. You know? <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. Which I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm checking in tomorrow. So I'm hoping for the best tomorrow. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I have to check in like you where there's no changes. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I, uh, you know, I'm hungry. That always happens regardless, but I'm not starving by any stretch of the imagination. I got plenty of food. Like it always makes me laugh when I look at my macros now because where I am right now after cutting for a while is like higher than what I would be on my off season with some other coaches. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, well, it's <laughs> like 1700 calories to some people yeah. that's their off season macro. Right. I'm on, I'm just fluctuating between 17 and 18, just around there. So depending on the, the cycle day or whatever for the, for the carbs, but it's like, this is really not suffering. It's really not that bad. <laughs> no, it's really not. You know, and like I said earlier, like I have good and bad days, you know, mostly my hungry days are my leg days and my hit days, but like, who cares? Like I'm, ex I was, I'm expecting to be starving 24 seven at this point. This is a freaking dream, you know? Yep. So it, for both of us, it goes back to following our reverse, getting our right. macros up super high. Like it, you sh you, it shouldn't have to be so hard if you do take care of yourself in the off season, yep. you know? And I think something too is like, I do chicken and rice and blueberries every meal, except for my first meal of the day, which is oatmeal. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that sort of bland diet. I mean, I love my meals, but like, mm -hmm. I don't care to overeat on rice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so it's mm -hmm. like, if I have a hundred grams, I go to a hundred grams because like, what's 10 more grams of rice. I don't want that. I don't need yeah. that. Right. So it just helps me stick so diligently to the plan yeah. that like, if I'm adding more fun foods in there, then I might want to like overeat or have 10 yeah. more grams of this or a bite of this. And like this season, it's like, it's to the gram because yeah. I just don't care to have more rice. It's like, whatever. Right. Um, so that's really helping me too mentally. So if you're kind of struggling with like overeating and, you know, things like that, like maybe just make it that, you know, bland chicken, rice, blah, blah, blah. But I feel full, satisfied. You know, I, I mix up um, my different like truff sauces in my food and that's like, yeah. kind of like my taste. And I'm very, very satisfied on low macros, you know, yeah. so yeah, you gotta, I design it. That's right. You got to find what works for you because I, I'm similar, but I always have my fun foods in the house so that if like, I feel like I need something, I can do it and I can do it in, in a controlled manner. I got home from masters and I have this, like this healthy, like caramel corn that I have sitting there that if I ever need a sweet treat or something, it's there and I can have like 20 grams of it. I'm good. And Dan had eaten it. <laughs> I was like, I saw the, I saw the empty package in the, in the trash. I was like, you ate my my caramel corn. Man, he pulled he pulled a dad on you. Like your dad he does that. Well, he Dan does that all the time to me. That's why that's why the whole peeps thing is like a legendary thing in my house because like because Dan does that all the time. Like he will try to eat something and replace it before I figure it out. But I always figure it out first before he has a chance to replace it. It always makes me laugh. There was this was years ago, right? So he was out of work. Uh, function and I was home and I was pissed because he was at a work function and I wasn't there and I was home so I was like I'm gonna go get chocolate and so I go to open up the like the box of chocolates chocolate. <laughs> yeah so I went to go get the box of chocolates that he had bought me the box of chocolates that he had bought me and I go open it up and I go to open up the piece of chocolate and it's empty like the actual piece of chocolate is empty like he had taken the wrappers and put them <laughs> back into the <laughs> <laughs> what did you think you would do? Yeah, hoping that I would, because I'm not that person that goes and eats chocolate every single day. So it's like one of those things, like like I only go for it when I when I, I had an emotional thing going on, right? So I was like, I want chocolate. So I went to go grab it, and I was like, and I was so mad. You don't even understand. Like, so I took a picture of the box and I sent it to him while he was at his work function. I was like, you ate the chocolate and then put it back. <laughs> In the container, I was so mad. To this day, he has not lived that down. To this day, he has not lived that down. He so, probably buys you chocolates like every Valentine's Day now. Well, no, what he did, so what he does now is if he eats my food, he replaces it three times over, right? Like, <laughs> like I have these these dark chocolate covered um, rice cakes that I get sometimes. You can only get them on Amazon. You can't because you can't like get them in the grocery store. So I can't just walk out and go pick up more, right? So he ate my rice cakes at one point. And I was like, he's like, I already ordered more on Amazon. They're going to be here tomorrow. And there's like four packets of them. And You're I'm like, like, I want it now. Yeah, I was like, but I wanted it now. <laughs> I was like, I have it programmed oh, no, my macro for now. Don't you touch my food. I'll come after you. 
<laughs> I swear, and he does it all the time and he always gets caught. I'm like, you know, I'm going to figure it out that you did it. I was like, I don't understand why you don't just ask me. If you just ask me, then I'm um, so yeah, go ahead and have it. And then at least I'm prepared and I don't have Mentally. a plan. I don't have a plan into my macros for the day. And it's not a big deal. But I'm like, just, just ask me. <laughs> big deal. <laughs> like I brought, I brought home little rolls from the from the buffet at the at the at the hotel because I went to the buffet and I got food to, to take with me. Yeah. Uh, they do that at the Sheridan, by the way, you guys. So if you ever go to Masters Nationals and you buy get their buffet, they let you take it to go box. So that's what I did. So I had little rolls in there, right? And I was just gonna just put them home. And I was gonna have one as like my post workout. But they, he asked me if he could have it. I was like, yeah, you can have it. He's like, well, you don't, he's like, you don't want it. I said, well, I want it. I said, but you can have it. It's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, it's not going to be a problem. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. Like, just ask me. I'm like, it's okay. You can have it. I'm like, I'll find Communication. something else. Communication. That's right. Communication. Yes. That's right. Yes. So, yeah, those are the things that we, that we, that we, this is married life, by the way, you guys, for those of you that aren't married, this is married, married life. Married life, death <laughs> life, all the things. <laughs> oh, this is another funny story. So. His sister has started making um, a pot butter. So it's, okay. So and you just put it on a cracker and that's what you, you go to sleep. It's like an edible, you know. Okay. So he's got this pot butter now to be able to sleep, right? So the first night he takes it, I go to bed. He's still up. He's it's, it, it like wired him for a while, and he was like, "Well, maybe if I eat something, yeah, if I eat something, then I'll, it'll make me go to sleep." So finally, he's in bed. I wake up in the morning. I'm the first one up. I go downstairs. There's like half a banana on the couch there's almond butter all over everything <laughs> I, was like, like, what the, I was like what did you do <laughs> I, was like, He's like, I got hungry and so i eat i was like i get that i was like there's literally a half a banana just laying on the couch i was like there's almond butter all over the counter the actual container of almond butter is covered in almond butter i'm like what the hell i'm like are you are you five years old <laughs> that's, what, that's what drew does he wakes up in the middle of the night and he'll eat and then he just leaves it out on the counter no yeah. shame just leaves all of the wrappers out pop tarts all yeah it. i'm like what were you doing in the middle of the night i got hungry i'm like could you clean when you were after you were done pulling everything out of the pantry well the thing that no shame laugh, in the game <laughs> i know the thing that we laughed was the banana on the couch it's like it was peeled and it was just the banana sitting there on the he couch. He was done with it. <laughs> just like, and the fact that my dogs didn't eat it. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. I was like, I can't believe I was like, even, even Elvis didn't want it. Like Dolly's in her little pen, so she couldn't get to it. But Elvis, Elvis eats anything. So I was, I was like, Elvis was probably passed out with you. I know. Right. I was like, what? I was like, even the dogs didn't touch it. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I guess these men, they drive. I was just saying it's a man thing. I don't know. Oh, I don't totally. know. 100%. <laughs> So whatever. Anyway, so that's our story for today. That's that's, that's our prep update. Yes. <laughs> So Interrupting let's... our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code cuties15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama Cutie sent you. So let's let's go into today's topic since we just talked about all that. <laughs> I don't even know. So individual versus team coaching as an athlete, as a coach, all those kinds of things. So let's talk about that a little bit. We went into it a little, um, but you know, up until I was with Fitbody, uh, I was with individual coaches my entire career. So it wasn't until I got with Jamie that I was uh, that I had like a team of people. So um, there's pluses and minuses to both. I think um, I know for myself as a coach, the team aspect is something I definitely wanted because again, I've, I've mentioned this a few times. I, I don't know what I don't know. You know what I mean? I know I'm going to run into situations where I don't have the answers and I can at least come to you guys. And like we were talking about before, trust you guys 
to help me to find the answers for my clients. That's one of the big reasons why I signed on with, signed on with Fit Body in the first place when it came to coaching. Um, because again, when I think about this, I think about me actually messing with people's health. Um, and I want to be able to do the best I possibly can for that client health wise versus just throwing some bro science at them. And I think that was probably going, and again, I wasn't an individual coach, but having an individual coach, I think it was probably one of my biggest pain points because, you know, I, I, I think about things and sometimes when they're, that coach can't tell me the reason why they're doing something um, that, that bothers me. You know, I still listen to my coach. I'm one of those people that if I sign on with somebody, I'm going to ride or die, you know, which is, I, I do what they tell me to do. I want a why. Uh, a lot of times they couldn't give me a why. So as a Red coach, flag. yeah, right. <laughs> right. Exactly. As a coach, that is one of the reasons why I wanted to be a coach on a team because I knew that I wanted to have that kind of support system behind me. So if I could, if I didn't know the answer, I could find it and I could get reliable people that could help me find it. Um, so your thoughts in that particular regard? Oh yeah. 100%. I mean, I've done it both ways as an athlete and as a coach have done it by myself. Um, I've only had two coaches, my first coach who was individual by themselves and then Jamie. <clears throat> um, and there's, there's, you know, absolutely pros and cons to both, but no matter what, as an athlete and a coach, I would much rather be as a team. And I will say this too, you know, I'm an only child. So, you know, I have done everything alone my entire life. Um, I was one of those people when I was on the consultation call with Jamie that I was like, yeah, I don't necessarily like need the team aspect and the team pump up in the photos. Like, I just want you like as my coach, right. she's like, okay, well, you know, a big part of us is like, you know, the family aspect. And I'm like, yeah, like I'm cool with that. I'm just saying like, I have never been on a team before. Right. Um, and I didn't know how much I needed it. You yeah. know, so like the first, I remember the first show with Jamie, you know, we're at the team pump up and I'm nervous because usually I just kind of do everything by myself, but it was so cool. Like meeting the girls and like talking to each other and having that support backstage, you're not by yourself. And I could still be in my zone with my headphones in just with everyone else from Fit Body around me. And there is, you know, peace in that, you know, it's not like I'm by myself and, you know, my first coach never went backstage with me. So I was always like, you know, watching what the other girls were doing and doing what they were doing and pumping up. And then I was in my own own head that I was like, well, maybe they're realizing that like I'm copying them and doing everything yeah. that they're doing. And, you know, that's the things that you think about as a first time competitor, you know, you're laying backstage with your headphones in and you're like, you're doing this every five seconds when the x you're saying something because you don't know what they're saying. But if all the girls are backstage, we're all helping each other, telling yeah. each other where to be and when. Um, so I completely agree. And again, I came from that mindset of like, I don't need this, but now I need this more than I ever thought I, I would. Yep. And the same thing, like I, you know, I'm not an only child, but I'm, I'm the eldest. So I was always the one in charge of everything. And I always still am in my business. Like it's hard for me to let go of control. It's hard for me to rely on other people. Like we were just talking about with the backstage thing. It's hard for me to do that because it's hard for me to trust that people have my best interests at heart. You know, at the end of the day, I'm like, and a lot of that comes, I think, from conditioning in this sport too, because a lot of coaches are territorial. Yes. Um, they are, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like, they're almost afraid to let other people into their culture because they're afraid they're going to, they're going to lose clients and things like that. You know what I mean? They're, they're afraid to share. They're afraid to, um, to let go of any of that kind of control of their clients. And I, I've come from that scenario with, um, with coaches before where it's like, you don't talk to other people backstage. You only talk to me, that kind of thing. And so I think that does get programmed in a little bit. And so it's like you start, you start kind of expecting the worst from people, right? Yeah. You start expecting that they are trying to. Why wouldn't you, know, you look at right. the world, right? right. You know, right. And that goes back to that trust aspect. It takes time mm -hmm. to build trust with someone. Anyway. That's right. That's right. You know, and it's, I, I would say there was one coach that was probably the closest I got to a team where he doesn't actually have a team of, of coaches, but he has a lot of athletes and things like that. And, and I was like, I'm going to give this guy a shot. And he was actually a really good coach other than he just didn't give the attention that I needed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's also a problem. I think when we're talking about individual coaches is that they, they just sign on everybody and then they don't have the time for you. If you're not like one of the star players, and that's how I felt in that particular situation. I wasn't a star player, so therefore I didn't get the individualized attention that everybody else did. Um, <clears throat> so I think 
when we go into these situations, a lot of times as a, as a new competitor, like you want to have a coach that you feel like is going to focus on you. So I think a lot of times they stay away from the team aspect because they think they're going to get more attention from the coach because that coach is by themselves. When in reality, it's kind of the opposite because I think that they're, that those particular individual coaches are just trying to sign on quantity and then they give their attention to the quality. You know, and those are the ones that you see. Those are the ones you see them post on social media. Those are the ones that you see get tagged and everything. Those are the ones you see doing well. But underneath that, they have a whole ton of other clients that are getting zero attention. Yeah. And I felt like that was the case for a couple of the coaches that I had. Yeah. Um, there was one individual coach that I felt like she was actually very, very good. She gave me a ton of attention. Um, she was backstage with me at one of my shows and that was one of the best placings I ever had because she was there with me and she gave me a ton of attention and all that. <laughs> but then later on down the road, I caught her talking shit about me. So there was that. So <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. So that's how we're going to play this. But anyway, um, so that's the reason why I left her because at that point I lost trust in her, you know? Um, yeah. And I actually have like a different perspective with my first coach and my first coach was absolutely brilliant. I mean, yeah. this man could have done anything he wanted to, any career he wanted to in his life. He wanted to be a bodybuilding coach. And I was one of his very first athletes and I was his star player at the time because yeah. I was the first and I did yeah. well very quick. Um, however, where, you know, and, and this kind of took that back seat is he was new, right? So he yeah. didn't quite know the criteria. He didn't quite know the look yet. And so I can't fault him for that. Right. But I knew at a point, like when, when, when I uh, hired Jamie, that I had just tapped out all of the resources. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, I did not care that he didn't know because I was aware of that when right. we decided to do this journey together. What bothered me was the fact that there was no effort to try to learn. Absolutely. So I was told, don't go get feedback. I know how I want to bring you in. I don't care what the feedback is. Um, he would go to shows with me, but there was no backstage presence. And again, like I think backstage, like that could make or break an athlete, especially 100%. for a first time competitor and especially for an amateur, just for the simple fact of stress. Yep. Hey, eat this. Hey, do this hey, pose for me. And they just had that peace of mind. And I never had that. I was so stressed backstage because I never knew exactly what to do. Um, and then I just kept getting worse. Mm -hmm. And then I was falling in love with the sport. <clears throat> I was putting in more time and attention to learning than they were. And then that's when I just kind of knew that it, it was done, you know, and obviously they were very upset when I left because I was hit the star player at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 again, everybody's different. It all just depends on how you approach, you know, your athlete as a coach. Like, I don't think that just because you're a single coach doesn't mean that you're not going to give everybody attention on your roster. Right. That is something that we hear quite a bit though. So mm -hmm. I totally understand, you know, but yep. it's, it's that they don't, they have to put in 10 times more effort because right. it's just them and right. them alone to learn things and to learn posing and to learn what the judges want. And then they're one person. They can't be at every show every weekend. I'm traveling 36 or 38 weekends this year, but I obviously can't be at every show. There's there's multiple weekends where I'm in one place, but I have another athlete in another, but you're at that place where I'm not. And that's where that team aspect yep. really, really helps us to be all hands on deck for our athletes at all times. Mm -hmm. I was backstage at Universe and I was, you know, you know, doing my thing back there and an athlete comes up to me, Fairy Francis, she's like, I'm with FitBody and I'm with Coach. I said, it doesn't matter. You're with FitBody. Right. How can I help you? What, what do, do you need? It doesn't matter if you're my athlete, not my athlete. If you're on our team, I'm there. What do you need? How can I help you? I'm here for you. Yeah. And that's peace of mind for you as a coach who's mm -hmm. not there and, and for me as well, because I want to make sure that that athlete has a great experience. Yep. The same thing, same experience. The first show that I had was New York Pro and Jamie was not there. So another one of the coaches came to my room, got Jamie on FaceTime with me, checked me in through that way, had her come in and pinch my, my legs to make sure that I was not holding water and all those kinds of things. But Jamie was there on FaceTime with the other coach and she was having the other coach say, okay, what do we need to do with her? What do you see in person? All that kind of stuff. I never had that before. You know, there was, I think my entire competitive career, I had my coach at one of my shows. No, I take that back. It was two shows. I've had two, I've had a coach at two shows my entire career until I came to Fit Body. So 
even with Jamie not there, there's somebody there that can take care of you as an athlete, you know, which is nice. I, I didn't. And again, I go back to that one girl that was, that was one of my best coaches I had. The one show she was there with me was one of the best shows I've had, period, because she was there with me, you know. Um, so I go back to that kind of those kinds of things. And and, you know, like you said, it's like it just it's that peace of mind. It's breathing being able yes. to take a breath and know that you're good, you know, that, that kind of aspect. Um, I lost my train of thought. This is prep brain right now. That's a great point because literally the, <laughs> since I've started with Jamie, there's only one show that she wasn't at and it was my very first pro win. But other mm-hmm. than that, she's been there for every show for me, you know, but, yeah. and again, like, you know, I know where she is. And of course we're strategizing, especially as a pro athlete, like where you're going to be, what your panel. And so we design shows that way so that mostly she's there in person. What's funny is the one time she wasn't there for this pro win, Drew was there for all of us. Yeah. And we were in this, the Soliday theater in Charleston and okay. that lighting and that, that there's like a Terrible. underground back yeah, area yeah. and it's very yellow. Mm-hmm. And he was checking us in and he just kept saying to me, you look like shit. He's like, you have no lines. Da, da, da. He was calling Jamie. He's like, I don't know what to do with her. What should we do? Blah, blah, blah. She's like, she looks fine. What are you talking yeah. about? And then I, you know, obviously won. So yeah. it's, it's funny. Like she wasn't there, but she still knew we were good. But Drew yeah. was the one that was like freaking out and he's right there in person. Right. So again, it just goes to the more time you spend with your coach and they have more reps, they know the outcome, even yeah. if they're not there, they, they, yeah. they have a better perspective, you know, of what you look like and how you're responding. So. Well, they, and also that, you know, I think having a team of coaches too, you can temper each other, you know what I mean? Like meaning, she knows that Drew's freaking out backstage. So she knows if she freaks out, that's not a good thing for you. You know no. what I mean? Like, he so she knows her she, anxiety. <laughs> right. Exactly. So she knows she's like, I got to bring, bring the, 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 the energy back down. You know what I mean? And that's, yeah. that's a big deal. I think that's a big deal. And like, it's, a, you can, you can feed off of each other and be each other's yin and yang. <laughs> And he was better at that. That was, you know, his, he was still learning and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was and things like that. Well, he's very close to you. I mean, that's the hardest part too. It's like, you're, you're not just a coach, your husband and wife, you know what I mean? That's a completely different level of intimacy there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's exactly. <laughs> I've gotten lots of compliments the last two weeks though. So that means I'm good. But I tell people this all the time. Like if you guys think that Drew's easy on me, cause I'm his wife, like think again, I get yeah. the brutal, honest feedback. There's more multiple times that I'm just doing my thing at the gym. He comes over to me and he rips my headphone out. He's like, this looks like crap. Believe this again. Like he is so hard on me, but that's why I think he's successful. He he cares. It comes from a place of love. And honestly, like I I would have, I wouldn't have been here, you know, if it wasn't for him, he has pushed me so far past what I thought I could ever do in this sport because he believed in me Mm -hmm. before I could believe in myself. So it used to be hard. Like there was multiple yeah. arguments in the beginning. And I was finally, I was like, stop coaching me. Like be my freaking husband. Now yeah. I'm allowing him this season to be very involved and I'm coming from a more coachable place. And that matters, you know, it does, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult thing to manage, but like, but like you said, I mean, it's because he cares and because he wants to see you successful. You right. know what I mean? Both, both ships rise at the same time. You know, I yeah. uh, remember what I was going to say, going back to your point. <laughs> remember yeah in regard to individual coaches versus team coaches as far as wanting to succeed like the the coach you mentioned your first coach um, not wanting to take feedback and things like that that's also your responsibility as an athlete to recognize that too you know what i mean If, if they're not willing to um to grow with you then you need to cut ties and you need to find what's good for you. You know, I always relate things back to, because we're big college football fans, right? So I always relate things back to Nick Saban. So Nick Saban, head coach of of Alabama, he's retired now, but he was an amazing college football coach, amazing college football coach, went to the pros, hated it because he hates the culture of the NFL, hates the way that people respond in the NFL. So he went back to college That's what he's good at. You know, you can't fault the guy for going where he knows he's good. Now, if he'd stayed in the pros and tried to make that work or that's not where he succeeds, then that's a problem, right? You know, like your first coach, you're talking about him, how he didn't want to get feedback. He didn't want to grow. That's his problem, right? So at that point, you have to make your decision as far as what you want to do as an athlete. Like, do you want to stay there in that spot? Or do you, do you want to go past that? Do you want to get better? If you want to get better, you got to go into a room where people are getting better. 
And I think that goes back to you to like that small, f- small fish, big pond mentality, right? Like some mm-hmm. people would stay with that coach because right. they are the star of the team. That's right. Absolutely. And maybe to them, that's, that's satisfying. Yep. That's fine. I never want to be a, a small fish in a big pond. I always want to be a small, small pond, big fish. So mm-hmm. um, that's where for me, I was like, yeah, like, cool. He cares about me. He gives me attention. He answers my check-ins. That's all great and everything. But like, I'm getting worse. I'm not yeah. progressing. And this is now getting boring and frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just really depends, again, at the end of the day, with anything in a sport, going back to your why and what your goals are. You know, I know one amateur in Florida, um, she never steps on stage at nationals, but she loves to just do Florida small regional shows and win the overall. So yeah. that's what is satisfying to her. And that's fine. You know, yeah. I hope one day she tries to go, you know, to nationals and gets a pro card, but you know, for her, that's satisfying enough. That would never be satisfying to me. I don't want to just keep stepping on a stage for an overall in the amateur. Like I want to take this as far as I go. Right. Um, but that's my why that's maybe not necessarily hers, you know? Mm-hmm. So it just goes back to what's your goals in this, finding a coach that aligns with that. And then if your expectations are getting met and your goals are getting met, Both parties are happy, but if not, that's that's when you need to, you know, evaluate maybe a possible change. Right. And you can't sit there and make somebody be something that they're not either. You know what I mean? Like if they don't want to, if they don't want to progress, that's okay. They can stay where they want to stay. You know what I mean? Like you said, you can, she can stay at that local level. It's Mm -hmm. fine. You know, that's the other, other aspect of this too. We've talked about this before for a lot of people, they go up to national level and they just completely get crushed and then they don't ever want to do it again. And they're just like, you know, whatever I'm done. Or the opposite happens, they go to the pro league and they never do well ever again. So they're completely crushed at that point, you know? So there's not a one right answer for everybody. If you're happy with your trajectory and you're happy where you are, that's great. That's where you should be. There's no like saying you have to move to this particular coach. You have to move to this particular stage. You don't have to do anything. You do what makes you happy in this sport. Again, at the end of the day, it's a hobby. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not going to be something where you're going to make your whole living off it unless you're coaching. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's not on stage. That's it's very few people, even the men, very few people make money on stage, you know? So it's, it's, you got to make that determination of, okay, where, where am I happy in this sport too? You know, for some people, again, they want to stay in like a natural league. They want to stay in an OCB or whatever. Um, you know, now the NPC is, is adding all those natural shows that you have the opportunity to be in the NPC and do the natural, natural shows as well. Maybe that's all you want to do. That's totally fine. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, the same thing with the coaches. For some coaches, they don't want to be going to every single national show. They don't want to be on the road every single weekend. You know, they don't want to be going to shows every 36 weekends a year. They don't want to be doing that. That's okay. You right. know, that's that's their choice. And you as an athlete have the choice of staying with that or finding somebody who does want to be at all your shows. Yep. You know, so again, those are the things you have to think about um, when it comes to, again, individual coaches. Because when you're talking about individual coaches, they're either going to be on the road all the time or they're not. And they're not going to have anybody that's going to that's going to support you if they're not going on the road. Yeah. I mean, and this is something you have to think about, too, is like, you know, with the bigger teams, there's there's a presence there. Right. Because Mm -hmm. bigger teams are able to do sponsorships. So with sponsorships we get things like backstage passes where when I was coaching individually, I used to have to pay 300 to sometimes $500 for a backstage pass, whether I had one athlete there or five, Mm -hmm. that's really expensive to do every weekend on top of that, all of the travel, all of the hotel. I never charge extra for travel expenses. I'm there because I like to be there. I like to be hands-on. I think that there's value in that. Um, But you have to think about that from an individual coach. Like they don't necessarily have dollars to be spending for these big title sponsorships to be getting front row, you know, uh, backstage passes and front row seats and things like that. Think, you know, thankfully with Fit Body, we are, we do sponsor a lot of shows and the coaches reap the benefits of that. We get backstage passes, we get to be there, we get to to pretty much do anything we need to be there for the athlete without spending a dime out of our pocket. Um, So if, you know, your coach being on site is important to you. I think that's maybe something that you should ask in the consult call. That's right. Are you are you at all the national shows? If not, which ones do you go to? Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to be there at my regional show? If not, what does that look like? That's right. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times I get on a consult call, and I it's 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 too um, it's it's happening more frequently than it should be. Where people are like, I didn't even hear from my coach on show day. They completely ghosted me. Yeah, that's wild to me. Like if my, if I'm not there with an athlete, I'm checking on them like every hour. Hey, how are you? Everything good. Hey, how are you? Everything good. I haven't heard, you yep. know, and, and making sure Same. they know I'm there. Yep. Um, 
So ask those questions up front. And some people honestly don't want their coach at a show. I've had yeah. a girl where she's like, I kind of just like want to do my own thing, like check on me every couple of like, they're just doing it for the experience and they don't want to feel like there's all this pressure. So that's mm -hmm. cool. She wants to do a show in the middle of Omaha in the middle of winter. I'm not going to be there. And she doesn't want me there either. And that's, that's right. cool too. That's her why that's her goal. Mm -hmm. So ask those, try to think about what's important to you in that coaching experience and, you know, ask those questions up front. That way you have a clear expectation as well. And I do know a lot of um, individual coaches are willing to go to your shows, but usually they do ask you pay for their expenses, whatever those Correct. may be. Mm -hmm. So be, be aware of that as well. Like if you get an individual, individual coach, ask them, say, listen, if I, you know, if, if I pay for your expenses, will you go? If they say no to that, then I don't know. I probably would say, I probably would say, okay, bye. <laughs> but like, if I'm going to pay for you to come, like I would want you to come. Why you would know, they not go? Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? So don't just automatically assume that they're going to come. Don't automatically assume that they're going to pay for themselves. Um, especially, like I said, individual coaches, because it is, it's expensive. I mean, just getting to the show alone is going to cost you hundreds of dollars just, just for the hotel and for the flights. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Let alone just taking the time out of your schedule too, because as we just talked about at the beginning of this, when we're at a show all weekend long, we can't be writing programs. You know nope. what I mean? So if they're trying to make it work and they're trying to make a living, they, they, they got to have a reason to be there, let alone right. just paying for their expenses. You know what yeah. I mean? So I had, a, I had one athlete on stage at Republic of Texas a couple of weeks ago, but originally when I booked her for that show, I was supposed to have three and the other yeah. two had dropped out. Yeah. The hotel room itself was $1,200 to stay for three nights. And then my flight out to Texas was just over 500. Mm -hmm. Plus what people don't realize too, is who do you think watches my dogs when I'm gone? Mm -hmm. I have to pay that fee, you know? So right. like, when I called her, I was like, Hey, listen, like it's only you. I wouldn't have pulled out if I didn't know that Jamie and Greg were going to be there. Jamie, yeah. Greg, and Yvette were on site already. So yeah. I said, hey, I'm not going to come because this is really expensive for one athlete, but you have right. Jamie, Greg, and Yvette there. And it worked out just fine. If she yep. was by herself, I would have totally done it and made that commitment to her and I would have been there. But yep. like, those are things that you, you have to think about. She's not paying those expenses. That comes uh -huh. out of my pocket. Fit Body doesn't right. pay those expenses. So, you know, try to think about those things too when you're like, you know, think just things to consider. This yeah, is no. it's expensive I, for us as coaches. <laughs> and even just on the other side of that too, for me, for me, like, you know, I've just started co coaching. So I just started getting prep clients, things like that too. But, you know, just going to these shows for as many years as I have, people just assume I'm going to be at shows. I'm like, you, I'm like, you realize that I, I, I make my money back doing hair and makeup. I was like, that's how I make my money back. I was like, you know, and like now I'm actually making some decent money by doing some commentary stuff and things like that. You know, that, 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 that helps. I said, but it still just barely pays for my expenses. <laughs> I'm, like, right. so I can't, I'm like, I can't be at every single show. I just can't. I had one, one client say, well, I thought she, you were going to be at my show. That's why I got this package. I was like, I say nothing in my packages about being at every single show. <laughs> I was like, that's the first thing. I was like, second thing is, is like, I'm doing your, I'm doing your posing and I'm doing your bikini. I'm like, why, why does that automatically mean I'm going to be at your show for you? Right. Like, you yeah. know, those are things you got to think about too. Like, I love being there. Don't get me wrong. But again, going back to what we were just talking about, it's expensive to be there. Not just the, not just the money, but the time too. The time expense is a big deal, mm -hmm. you know? So those are all things that we have to consider. And that's where, you know, again, going back to Tampa, I have one NPC girl in it. Um, I can do commentary, but at the end of the day, I was like, why am I like Tampa's a long show and, and I'm was, there. Right. Yeah. 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 And Tampa's a long show. It's, it's, you know, three days, four days. It's expensive. It's a long show. It's not just to fly in on or drive in on Friday and go home on Sunday. That's not what it is. It's a fly in on Wednesday, go home on Sunday. You know, yeah, that's, that's a long time. Right. You know, so you have to sit and think about those things. I go to all the shows. I go to a lot of shows because I can drive to them. I'm here on the East Coast and I can literally drive to a show every single weekend if I wanted to. Absolutely. You know, and that's how we learn too as coaches. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, but yep. I mean, obviously if, if we don't have to be at a show, then and we need a weekend, we need a weekend, you know? Which, by the way, so, you know, I'm not going to Tampa anymore. And I said I was going to go live, but Dan and I decided to go to Virginia Beach for the weekend and do a little, a little Good vacation. for you guys. So, I was awesome. like, let's, yes, let's do that. Let's let's go let's go wake up on the beach. <laughs> so we're going to go do that for a do few days instead. Do it while you can. Do exactly. it while you can, you know? Well, that's why I said. We were trying to find a weekend to do it this summer. And it's just because of my work schedule, I can't. And I was like, well, listen, I've already got this weekend blocked off because I was supposed to go 
to Tampa, I said, let's, let's take advantage of it and go to the beach. So we're yeah, go to the good beach. For you guys. his sisters live down there and stuff like that too. So we're going to see family while we're down there and everything too. So it's like, okay, we, we can take a few days. We can take That'll a few be days. Fun. That'll yeah, be fun. It'll be good. So, um, so I know you've got to run, take your dog to the vet. So with that said, anything else that you wanted to add that we didn't cover for today? I don't think so. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, I don't think that there's one right answer for anybody. We say this all the time with the, right. it depends. That's our, that's our favorite line. It, with does. The it depends. Yeah. It depends. It depends. So I think you just need to sit down and write down what's important to you and have those ready to go whenever you consult a coach, whether it's an individual or whether it's a team. I mean, obviously we've made our choice. There's very good reasons why we've made our choice. Um, this may be the right choice for you. It may not be, you know, so that's, that's the direction you need to go. I mean, obviously we're going to be a little bit biased towards fit body because we work for fit body and we are also coached by fit body. So it's like, it's one of those things. It's like that, that's just a human bias. That's what it is. <laughs> like not going to lie about that, but at the end of the day, it might not be the right solution for you. So yeah. And I think ultimately, like uh, I just signed up a new client and, um, she was at master's nats with another coach and we actually did a consult backstage. She came and found me and we talked yeah. and she she was like, my biggest issue with my coach right now is just like, I don't feel like I can talk to her. I feel like anything that I tell her, it's like, it's combative and it's, you know, there's no listening and that's a red flag, right? So if you're experiencing that, like ultimately you need to find a coach, number one, that you trust out the jump and you feel like you can be vulnerable with and communicate with that. It does not matter if that coach works for a team or as individual, that comes down to you and the coach's relationship, like right. developing that rapport. So truly it does not matter, but maybe for the socialism or or for the knowing the coach is going to be, you know, at multiple shows when it gets a little bit broader in terms of what you want of a coach, those are things that you need to consider versus individual or team aspect. Right. But the number one thing is just to find a coach that you have a great okay. rapport right. with and right. then try to sort out all those other details right. from there. You know, and on that top, same vein there, you know, that's something where if, if the coach's style just doesn't fit with you communicate that with your coach. Say, listen, I need it a little bit more. I need to be delivered a little softer or I need to have it delivered a little harder or whatever it may be. Can you work with me on this? And if you can't, that's cool. Let's figure out something else. Maybe, maybe you go to another coach on the team or something like that, whatever, but communicate with your coach and tell them what you want, right? There's, you can't yeah, fix it if we don't no. know. What the yeah. No. And if you say one thing and do another, I mean, we're, we're left in the dark, you know, yeah. we're left in the dark. I tell my clients that all the time. So many of them, like they just, they're scared to talk to me or something. So listen, just tell me we can fix it. You know, if you just talk to me, we'll figure out a solution, whatever, whatever the right solution is, but just talk to me. I, I promise I'm not that scary. Right. <laughs> I promise. Right. I yeah. promise. And, and there's like not... you said, if it's an issue I can't fix, then I'll yeah. say, hey, that's okay. Let's find another coach on FBF that exactly. does work for you. Or that's that right. the client says, hey, I need you to be a little bit harder on me. I need you to be a little be, be a bit softer. I could do yeah. that, but I don't know that unless you communicate that. And I'll never be mad. It's, it's not what you say. Agreed. It's how you say things. Agreed. Um, mm -hmm. And I've had people that reach out and they're like, hey, you're just being a little too hard on me right now. Can yeah. we pull back? Or, hey, I need a little bit more from you. I'm ready to push. Let's, and yep. I'm like, all right, cool. Yep. You know? So, and I don't take any offense to that. <laughs> nope. I just had that happen with a new client. She thought that I was like, that I was, um, mad at her. I was like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not mad at you. I promise. I said, I'm just trying to give you the, the X, Y, and Z so that you can put them all together and find yeah. your solution. I said, absolutely not mad at you. Not at all. Yeah. And from that point on, our communication is great. Like, yeah. But she and reached you know out about that and she said remember. something. Yeah. yeah. It's, we're, we're talking a lot through the computer, you yeah. know, so context and emotion does not get really thrown across. And nope. I'm like you, I'm very black, white to the point. So sometimes mm -hmm. that can be misconstrued as you're mad or right. you're very, you know, and, and sometimes it is. And sometimes it's just, you know, you're not, you're obviously not you're hearing reading, my emotion. Reading right. Yeah, so, you know, so if you're feeling a certain way, or if you feel like, you know, you're walking on eggshells, have that communication have a conversation. Yeah, that's 100%. it. And most of the time it's just the way you're perceiving it. And that's I've right. been there before I perceive things. Sometimes I'm like, Jamie, are we good? Like, is everything? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We're fine. Sorry. I was just voice texting, you know, that's whatever. Right. So, but I asked her and then I have peace of mind. That's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's, it can, it can always be solved, right? It can absolutely. always be solved if you just talk about it. That's, don't be afraid with anything in life. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. It's like sometimes we just have a moment. Sometimes we have a moment where your husband eats your chocolate and then puts it back into the container. <laughs> and then you're pissy all day. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes we just have a moment. It's me. Or it's Dan. <laughs> it's Dan. But I'm going to blame it on my husband. So exactly. don't we all? We, we blame all those things on our husbands. <laughs> 
When in doubt, <laughs> blame Drew and Dan. You guys can do all that too. <laughs> That's right. hundred percent. All right. Awesome. I'm going to let you get your dog to the vet so that you can get his eyes all cleared up. Um, and other than that, you guys like, comment, subscribe. This is episode 48. And hopefully this was helpful. Uh, write down your, your pros and cons, your pluses and minuses, and which direction you want to go. And be very clear about what you want. Um, and that's it. Yes. All right. See you guys next week. Yeah, we'll see you.